new What the Flick reviews The Walking Dead, Season 6, Episode 10, The New World, A Vision of Happiness for The Walking Dead. <laughs> I thought you were going to go into like a sing a song there. That's the what it sounds Walking like. The Walking Dead. <laughs> uh, this is Tim. I am Kim. Ajax. Let's get into it. Um, so this is what it looks like to have a happy episode. I don't think anyone died. Nope. This episode at all. Um, some we even really say, got close. Some would call it boring. Some would call it idyllic. How would you describe it? I, I think in a different time, in a different place, I would have shit all over this mm -hmm. episode. Me too. Uh, going into it with a different attitude, though, I'm actually going to speak in defense of this episode. Yeah, me too. This is uh, the the last time on on The Walking Dead starts with Deanna talking about her her idealistic brave new world that she wants to build and now we get to see it. They jump weeks, maybe months mm -hmm. into the future. I'm guessing somewhere between one and two, two months. Weeks. Yeah. Because yeah. like Maggie yeah. isn't showing yet, but six six weeks ish. Carl is, is seems what I to have gotten out. on well, adapting right. to having just one eye. I think that was the best part of it, is that it was a refreshing time jump. We didn't need to see them wallow in self pity over what happens with Carl and his recovering uh, whatever was going on with Rick. Like it just said, okay, that happened. This is what a day in this life will look like. That is what I loved about this episode. This portrays how, uh, and so accurately titled, this is portrays how the, a day in this world, a normal day, and it still has some forms of chaos, but it was very well sold by that final line to Rick and Daryl at the end when they were just like, yeah, crazy, like, same again tomorrow. That was what sold the episode for me. It was like, we're not here to consistently throw you with chaos. We're here to show you also, the, the destructive despair that can happen, but also, this is how life is going to be. This is a normal day. It's and it will be short-lived. This, yes, this sense of stability that we're seeing is not going to last maybe even one more episode. No, I didn't think but no it can't. It, it just won't be an interesting series. Right. That it, it shows that resolve that we see at the end of the last episode from Rick. It's like, I get it. We can build this mm -hmm. community. These people are ready. Let's do it. Fast forward six weeks. They did it. Yeah, and what they probably would have done, or what I think they've learned from, is in the past, you would have seen Rick be by Carl's bed and consistently like, fight. I yeah. love you, son. I love you, son. Oh, I love We're this new world. We're gonna make a new world together. <laughs> that was good. Carl, you know. Spot on. Just Did anyone say, I'm going on a tangent here, but it was definitely worth mentioning. There was a comment, I believe, and they said, Arl can't see after this. It was very, after the oh, last episode. So creative. Neat. You deserve a shout out for that. Such a funny uh, comment. Thanks, internet. Either way. That's great. Um, nice but yeah, you're, you're right. And it would, it would probably, he would probably go in turmoil as well. He'd be like, ah, oh, I do feel this way. Then I don't back and forth. And it was just like, nope. This happened, let's move on. And that's what I and think. And then Morgan I took comes that. in and tells him something, and Carol comes in and yes, tells him something. Yes, that's what would happen. It would tell him all these different pieces of it, but he's just like, I get it now. I need to be more. Th this whole episode should have just been called optimism. I said, so, just be optimistic. Yes, we've moved forward. We've moved on. People are generally happy. People are making requests for Crutch, the soda of the zombie world. Yes. Um, and we and have sorghum. Daryl and... <laughs> a hunky-dunky super grain. There we go. Uh, Daryl and Rick going on a fun Romance. road trip together. Oh, don't choose that song, Rick. that honky-tonk. <laughs> oh, this was for sure like the buddy cop you know, episode. Fun. Cool. I yeah. liked it. Yeah, they're I on a road it. trip. They're they listening to music. They rarely get paired together because they're both like leaders. Yes. I, I it agree. It was strange to see them together. I was like, you're really going to put both of them in there yeah. in the car and like leave everybody? But I guess that you know goes to the stability that the community's in now. Yeah. Where and Rick and Daryl can afford to leave. The flaws in the episode for me were more their choices. Like when you come across a truck that has that much goods, take it back home. When I Don't saw drive that around truck, I was like, that truck is a trap for yes, sure. Yes, of course. But it's... it was it kind of was, I mean, not. It on wasn't purpose. a wolf's trap. It was, I was sure people had said it as a trap, but they mm. didn't. Yeah. Uh, because I've been trained to be parano uh, paranoid from this show. Of course. Yay. And, and, and this is this all plays into that and paranoia. Then I, you know, when I saw. Jesus. Yes. I immediately didn't trust him. Mm. Uh, a la Daryl. I didn't know about him from the comics, but I. Uh, I stopped reading idea. before Jesus appeared okay. because yeah. I'm actually enjoying the series more, not having That's any a good idea. knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so I don't know about Jesus. Yeah, Teach I mean, me about Jesus. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to bring to it. But I did like their, their bromance together. I thought some of the, as I mentioned, their decisions were questionable. But nonetheless, I think that. Despite some forced drama that I think snuck back in, very similar to that Daryl episode Are you that I hated. Toward the Enid, Carl scene? Enid and Carl scene more mm -hmm. than anything. So we can talk about that. I just think that let's not. I, I, it's that, that just, was irrelevant. That's exactly what it is. It was relevant. I, didn't think I just found it odd that they just wouldn't put down that particular Walker because in the past they've we've frequently seen people paired up with someone who is significant to them in life, mm -hmm. uh, being like, "Oh, I have to kill my brother. I have to kill my parent." You know. And then it's just like, why why this one? Why now? Why have we regressed on this issue? 
Well, now, and maybe you can shed some light on it, because I wasn't really sure Carl's motivation. Was he, like, leading that walker somewhere? I think he was leading it to uh, the, the son. Yes. It's to Spencer. It yeah. wasn't just, like, to keep tabs on it so that it no. didn't sneak up on Michonne. I think he, he was, was like, Spencer needs to, to mm -hmm. yeah. have this closure, which yeah. is a, a fine storyline. Spencer needs closure. Michonne follows him. They establish what home is yeah. in this new world. And I think that was... You kind of helped me realize this. I think that all happened in Parcel to, to set up just that one scene with Carl and Michonne so that he could say, if it was you, dad. I would want to do that for you. Like, because I love you. I would like to take, you're I would, my new you're mommy. my new mommy, basically. That's <laughs> in a nice family. So I think that was all partly for that to give Spencer's closure, but at the same time, highlight that as we kind of sense what happened at the start when they touched hands when they walked by with uh, Rick and Michonne that it was going to happen. So I guess we got to get to that because. That was for All me right, to stand up. So, if you've been shipping Rick and Michonne, it happened. Oh, no. Michonne. Did... <laughs> That's the ship name. It's real. We're going with it's it. Real it's now. real. Yes. It happened. As soon as it's planned. So, I mean, I, you know, at the beginning, the first scene, I was wondering, like, are they? Because they? Yeah. there was like, a lingering touch. Mm -hmm. She's wearing her back. Sharing toothpaste. Asking for toothpaste. You know, I thought it seemed very domestic to me. Yeah, very familiar. And then I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe she's just doing that thing she's been doing where she. You know, she loves Carl, and she's taking care of the baby, and whatever, but no. Uh, I think, it, I mean, I think they have a genuine chemistry that seems like mm -hmm. friends that have turned into lovers. <laughs> that is what it seems like. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm saying their chemistry is good. Yeah. That's, no, that's yeah, what it, it feels is. like. I think they could have went either. It doesn't either. feel, like, ridiculous. I think they, the reason why I was questioning it at the start is because I thought they could have went either way. Because they had that very buddy-buddy relationship where they cared for each other, and they were close, but I... I could still see the romance happening. So at the start, I think it was just a teaser to say, okay, look how this dysfunctional world can still promote goodness and this nice family that acts normal in that environment. And I think that was, again, to go with the theme of the episode. Like, things can, things, this is what normality looks like amongst the chaos. This is what it looks like with everything else going on. Is like, it, in an enclosed home, it can be somewhat normal, but when you go outside of it, everything obviously can change. And I think it's just to get us, as you mentioned, Kim, to get us get into that feeling of, oh, this is nice, just before someone comes in and goes, fuck Ooh, you. No more family. Yeah, no no more, more family. happy. And I imagine his name will start with N and end in Egan. Do you suspect that Jesus will be part of that? Is he, mm. how, how does he tie in? Because he, I think he's going to be a pretty major character this mm -hmm. season. I think Jesus is going to be good. I hope I so. Mean, take it as a print now. <laughs> we could, we could definitely, the camp could utilize those skills. He certainly has some issues with personal space, though, as we see at the end. Yeah. yeah. So... And he's, he's I like definitely. How he purposely was like all on Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought. You, I, you think he was faking in that that's scene? What, that's yeah. what I was going to say. I, yeah. thought, I thought he was just thinking to himself, all right, I'm, I need to find my way to the camp. Yeah, it's been a while since we had a really crafty character. I mean, how did we he get usually, on the roof? We usually see really sneaky, crafty, you know, conniving people as the villains. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to find one all by himself and have him get tied up in this Alexandria whirlwind. Yeah. I think he's going to be a fun character. I'm looking forward to more of him. Yeah, it was an interesting scene when he, he was he showed, which is, I think was all part of his plan to show little interest in them so that they think they could utilize him. Because a guy that seems to stand on his own two feet, have a trim beard, as Rick says, and goes about his business, is someone you can utilize. And it's funny when he was walking away and Rick's like, uh, how, how many walkers you killed? How many walkers you killed? Okay, see, see you later. Maybe we'll run. Text me later. <laughs> Bye. Oh, it's so sad and cute. Please come with us and play with us. Yeah. But again, it was, uh, there's some moments in there you could be like, I mean, he was tied up. How did he get on the roof? But nonetheless, I'm not going to question the realism. He's going to be of use. Sure. That whole storyline was The Walking Dead's version of comedy. Yes, exactly. You know, him him on the roof, him being one step ahead if of them. If there was ever The whole scene, running through the field with yeah, the truck like, rolling. It needed to have that Benny Hill song. Yeah, Yakety Sax. Yakety Sax. <laughs> it's, on, it's on the internet already. It you has can to find be. it. Please it's, make it. It's, yeah. it's the, yeah. It's and, the, and as much as some sources that I looked at briefly while criticizing that, I just thought, like, why not do comedy? When's the last time they had a, a comedic episode? And it's perfectly timed after what we just seen of mm -hmm. the previous episode with all the, the bangs and the booms and everything that they gave. It's a perfect episode as a filler, and I would rather this episode completely than the ones we've had in the past. There's so, so many, I don't, they don't stick out to me by an example, but you know what I'm talking about, where they, do, they will wallow in self-pity. They, well, they'll they tell rest you everyone's on, reaction. They'll have an exciting episode, and then they'll you know, fall back on their laurels they'll and rely say, on okay, them. now we need to show three episodes of how everyone's reacting to that exciting episode. Yes, exactly. And all the emotions they're going through. And you know what? Just power straight through it. A couple weeks later, a nice little palate cleanser, mm -hmm. you know, a little absurdist humor, 
a little sure. optimism. I like it. I yeah. mean, we we sometimes in the past have been like, oh god, we had a great episode. Now it's time for three terrible episodes, and yeah. it has happened. But when I think but about, I think they're cleaning it up, and it, it's I'm I'm happy with this filler. Yeah, my fatigue is not there it's at this not, point. Yeah. And this at this point word, last fatigue. season, at this point last season in the mid season finale, it was say a similar thing. It was all. And I remember the Beth episode was one as well, and it was when after Beth had died, and after that. It just kind of drew out for two or three episodes, and I was like, "All right, I get it. It's 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 tragic." But in this episode, it ended with positivity, in the episode before, and it picked right up no, where it, it left off. It ended with sex. This one ended with sex as well. So still, <laughs> depending on the way you look at it, definitely Is that a first positive. for The Walking Dead, ending the episode in sex. It can't be the first time we've seen a butt. I think we've seen Abraham's butt. But okay. well, we've seen Abraham's butt when he was doing it in the library when um, what's his name was watching. Her name is Rosita. No, doing it in the library. No, oh, doing right. Library. Okay, sorry. He was doing it, doing it with Rosita whilst. Uh, what's his name was Eugene was watching and he was just kind of sneaking through the back and oh. now it's Jesus Jesus is always watching yes he is and let's leave it with that we'll see you next <laughs> week when we review episode 11 will it be good we'll find out <laughs>